The secret to a good sip of coffee is maintaining eye contact. Welcome back today. We're back to more Kurzgesagt. We're reacting to unlimited resources from space asteroid mining today. I can't wait to see this one because I think that asteroid mining or just in general getting resources from off planet, whether that be from asteroids or planets, is definitely in our future as a species. Now asteroid mining has a benefit because it's a lot easier to get off of an asteroid than a planet because they have much less gravity. So designing a rocket to go to the asteroid, pick up some type of load, and then get off of the asteroid, that's going to be a lot less difficult than doing the same for a planet. Can't wait to see what we learned today. Ah, casually watching a video on YouTube on a computer more powerful than anything humanity could build a few decades ago. Well, this yeah. This progress and all the wonderful machines you take for granted are built on a few rare and precious materials with names like terbium, neodymium, or tantalum. Getting these rare materials from the ground into your devices is ugly. Yeah. The mining industry is responsible. Those for giant mining machines that they're showing there, it's just. Oh man. I want to see one in real life because the scale has to be insane up and close in person. Harming biodiversity, workers, and locals. Mm -hmm. And rare resources are also political tools when countries restrict access to them to get their way. Yeah. But what if we could replace the mining industry on Earth with a clean process that can't harm anyone? Well, we can. All we need to do is that the is butter up. machine from Rick and Morty? The butter passer. Pretty sure I caught that in there. Asteroids Pickle Rick! Of Come on! We had the butter passer machine, and now we have Pickle Rick right here, it looks like, <laughs> as an asteroid. I love the callouts. <laughs> this is awesome. Millions of tons of rocks, metals, and ice, leftovers from the cloud that became the planet 4.5 billion years ago. They can be as small as a meter, or protoplanets the size of entire countries. Yep. Most of them are concentrated in the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt, while hundreds of thousands more do their own thing between the planets. As space travel is becoming more... Yeah, there's so many of them out there. It's absolutely ridiculous. ...found in these asteroids. Even relatively small metallic asteroids may contain trillions worth of industrial and precious metals like platinum. And bigger asteroids like 16 Psyche could contain enough iron nickel to cover the world's metal needs for millions of years. Another option too, and I don't know if this is a serious option that's been discussed, or maybe it's just a really stupid option <laughs> in the first place. Instead of going to the asteroid and mining it, you know, where it's at, maybe it might be a little bit more feasible to redirect the asteroid into a near-Earth orbit. If we could attach a rocket to the asteroid that could act as a thruster to maintain its low-Earth orbit, or maybe a little higher than that, just to prevent it basically from falling into the atmosphere and burning up, then uh, mining it would be a lot cheaper because it's a lot less far away. Potentially, if it's a big enough asteroid, you could even crash it into the Earth under controlled conditions into a certain space and then mine it when it's there. Although you're going to lose a lot of the volume of the asteroid as it burns up in the atmosphere that way. Quite interesting thoughts, though. At current market prices, the rare raw materials alone would be worth quadrillions of dollars. Well, not really, but technically. For example, there are more than 20 million tons of gold in the ocean's water, worth roughly 750 trillion US dollars. Jeez. Filtering out the gold would be so expensive that you'd lose money selling it. Okay. Right now, asteroid mining... It has to be economic, otherwise no one's going to do it. ...expensive to replace mining on Earth. Billions of dollars worth of valuable resources in space are worthless if it costs trillions to get them. Yeah. What makes it so hard? The principles behind mining an asteroid are simple. The basic idea is to choose an asteroid, move it to a place where it's easy to process, and okay. then take it apart to turn into useful products. Unfortunately, all of this collides with fundamental problems humans have yet to solve. Going to space is expensive. It costs thousands of dollars in rocket fuel for each kilogram. Just yeah, I feel like technically, it's not a technical limitation. Deep space costs it's an economic limitation. We could do it. Mining profitable. 
one solution is to switch from classical rockets to electric spaceships. We already use electrical rocket engines for many of the space probes on science missions. In prison, okay. we only need to build bigger ones. While electrical engines are not powerful enough to fly to space, they require only a tiny amount of fuel to go very far once they're in space. This means we don't need to spend a lot of money on fuel. I was wondering if we had a technology like that that was actually fully developed. Whole cost problem, but it makes it easier to start our first mission. Now that we have an electric asteroid mining spaceship, we need to find the right asteroid and get it there. We've already successfully visited asteroids with space probes and even collected samples. Still, to make it easier and cheaper, our first targets will probably be near-Earth asteroids. asteroids. Makes sense. Orbit, well, near-Earth. After a few months, <laughs> pretty self-explanatory. Finally arrives at our asteroid. Weirdly formed, littered with small impact craters, it hasn't changed much for billions of years. The floating duck asteroid. <laughs> so I don't know if this video was made prior to this happening or not, but the asteroid redirect mission that NASA did, but their mission was basically to hurdle a probe into an asteroid and use its kinetic energy of that impact to redirect it a little bit and change its course. And it's a test to see if we could, with enough warning, divert an asteroid that's heading towards Earth. An asteroid that's big enough that it could have pretty big consequences if it were to hit Earth, if it was on a collision course for us. Can we actually, using a space probe and just ramming it in there, can we actually redirect it enough that we could alter its course to not hit us? And long story short, yes, we can. We've done it. I can't remember the name of the mission, which is really bothering me right now. But that mission actually did successfully do that. And the probe had a camera on it. And it was snapping a picture every second, I believe it was. And you can go and watch the video of this where it's snapping a picture every second as it's crashing into the asteroid. So you get a really close-up view of this asteroid in amazing high resolution. And asteroids do not, in reality, look like I personally thought they did and what they did in our school books <laughs> in, in school, you know? It's quite a bit different. It's a very loose collection of smaller items, and they're not solid chunks of rock, or at least this particular one wasn't. I've said it once and I'll probably say it many more times. It is absolutely amazing what humanity can do. The first thing that needs to be done is to secure the asteroid and stop it from spinning. There are multiple ways to do this, like vaporizing material with a laser or stopping the rotation with thrusters. Once we have a stable asteroid, we need to wait. Orbital mechanics are complicated, but if you push something in the right direction at exactly the right moment, you can move very big things with very little force. Yep. So, we wait for exactly the right moment. Our ship fires its thrusters and nudges the asteroid into a trajectory that takes it near our moon. The moon is useful because we can borrow its gravitational pull to put the asteroid in a stable orbit yep. around Earth, which saves even more fuel. Again, the trip takes months, but all the time since our ship was launched has not been wasted. I know that it's super simple math at the end of the day. Maybe simple is not the right word, but it's straightforward math to figure all this stuff out. The orbits, the pass it needs to take, exactly how much thrust is needed. But it's mind-blowing to me that we can figure this stuff out very, very, very accurately and have done so in the past. Like I said, what humanity can do is insane. The first space mining and processing equipment has been installed in orbit and is now carefully moving towards the asteroid. The processor works very differently than on Earth. Giant mirrors focus sunlight and heat up asteroid rock to boil out the gases. Grinders break up the dried rocks into gravel and dust, and centrifuges separate dense from light elements. Even if we only extract 0.01% of the asteroid's mass in precious metals, this is still several times more than you'd get from the same amount of ore on the ground. Oh, what now? really? How do we get our it's just more pure? Safely back to ground. There are a few ways, like loading it into reusable rockets that return to Earth from space. Or if our processor contains 3D printers, we can print a faster and cheaper delivery system. Heat shielded capsules filled with gas bubbles. These can just be dropped <laughs> into the oceans <laughs> and poor bird. Throw them away. This could be the starting point of humanity's first real steps towards colonizing the solar system. As our infrastructure and experience grows, our missions get more and more sophisticated. Yep. Parts and fuel once you get started, don't have to be launched from Earth at all. It's a lot easier to grow that operation once it's in place. And so on. 
and it becomes more and more and more economical the more you do it. Eventually, we could stop Yeah, Earth. what they're saying. Even the idea of toxic mining down here might become something weird and anachronistic, like mm -hmm. having an open fire in your living room. <laughs> Landscapes ravaged by pollution. That's not normal. While the technological wonders we're used to get cheaper and less toxic to make. None of this is science fiction. We don't need fancy materials or new physics to make asteroid mining happen. We could start building this future today. All we need is an initial push. That's why things look a little weird. My camera was angled too high. Hello, I'm down here. That was a really cool video. Everything Kurt Skazag makes is very well. I've yet to see a video of theirs that has disappointed me in any way. I love these guys. Kudos to them. Go support them, please, if you can. They're amazing, and they deserve it. So my initial thoughts were pretty well on track, I think. Bring the asteroid closer to the Earth, and then mine it here. Send it back down. I really do think that asteroid mining, though, is the future. I think it's going to happen. Now, when will it happen? I don't know. It might start to be a thing in my lifetime, but I don't think that I'll live to see a huge influx of asteroid mining. Maybe I will. I, for some reason, think we're going to move at a little slower pace than that, just because of the huge investments needed to get that going, and the fact that we as a species tend to uh, put our problems off rather than be proactive on them. So we probably won't really start hitting that hard until we have a reason to, until we start running short on some of those materials that we need then we'll hop on that and really start focusing that on on asteroid mining regardless what we can do as a species is absolutely amazing scary wonderful and beautiful all at the same time thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it if you do like this please slap that like button if you want to see more hit that subscribe button we just hit 100 subscribers and i am eternally thankful to all of you it blows my mind, uh, all the support that I've been getting on the channel. I love interacting with you guys in the comment section. Thank you so much for that. It really makes this experience enjoyable for me. I hope you have such a wonderful day and take care.